If you just got the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, Galaxy S24 Plus, or Galaxy S24, then we have a ton of tips and tricks and features to go over. There are over 120 of them in chapters down below. This is even more exciting because we have a new version of One UI and some fun AI features to check out. You'll find something that you didn't know about before in this video, I promise, because this video will help you utilize all that this phone has to offer. Of course, if you haven't already picked up a Samsung Galaxy S24 series device or want to get some accessories, check out the links in the description to find the best price, free upgrades, and more. Using the links help make free videos like this possible, and if you look at the battery lifetime and my voice when this video starts and then when it ends, you'll see how much work goes into it. And probably get a good laugh. Tip number one is the first thing I do on any Android device and is the favorite amongst the hardcore Android community. If you're not used to this, it may seem scary at first, but it isn't, trust me. Here is a really awesome, clever way to supercharge your Android phone like the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. First, let me show you what the animations look like normally. If I'm moving up and down right here or I bring up you know, some sort of window and pop it up. So that's what the animations and everything looks like normally. Let's change that a bit. So swipe down from the notification shade and hit the gear icon there. Swipe all the way down to about phone at the bottom. And then you're gonna click on software information. And then you'll click on build number and you're gonna keep tapping on it. It'll tell you your certain steps away from being a developer. And then it's gonna ask you for your pin number. This is the pin number that you chose when you set the phone. It's not the one that I'm putting in. And then it says developer mode has been turned on. Now that we've done that, it unlocks a new setting. So if you swipe back two times, you'll see here at the very bottom, there's this option called developer options. Click on that. You're going to swipe down all the way until you find the one that says Windows animation scale. So right here, we have it here and it's defaulted to 1x. That's the normal animation speed of everything that we saw. Now, remember, this is what it looked like. Now I'm going to tap on this and I'm going to choose 0.5x for all of them. And I don't know if you can tell, but things are a lot faster and snappier. It's like you kind of supercharge your phone so everything moves way faster than before. If you want to go really crazy, you can turn off the animations all together. It turns off like all the smoothness for things though. So I, I like to keep it at the 0.5 animation scale and it makes things feel really fast and snappy. And no, this does not negatively affect your battery life. If you ever want to see more things on your Android device, like the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, or you need to make things bigger, Bigger, so it's easier to read. Maybe you or a parent needs a little bit more assistance to be able to see things more. You can control all those things and customize it on your phone. The way to do that is you would go and swipe down on the notification shade and hit the gear icon and swipe all the way down to display. Now you can tell that mine probably looks pretty small in this video. And that's because I like things being really small and fit like a ton of stuff on it. So you have your font size, it's right here, but I'll default it to the normal amount for the rest of this video so it's a little bit easier for everyone to see and you can change the screen zoom as well you can see that you can have control of how much you can see on your screen here's an interesting thing that happens on your Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra when you initially buy it the default resolution and refresh rate is lower than what it can do which is interesting because you can do so much more with this especially for the price you pay so let's figure out how to change the settings to get the most out of this display all right swipe so down go to the gear icon and then go to your display settings here. And then you'll see this option for motion smoothness. Now it will default to standard, which means it only goes 60 Hertz per second. But this can go all the way up to 120 Hertz, which means everything can look way smoother. So you can turn on adaptive smoothness and your phone will seem snappier and smoother. It's easier to read text and things like that. The other thing that you can do is change the screen resolution. What's interesting is on the ultra models, you actually have a QHD plus option here for your resolution, but it defaults to the FHD plus. I mean, you're paying for this like really nice screen. So use the whole resolution and that actually doesn't affect your battery battery life. There's been some tests out there that show that there's no difference between the resolution. If you're trying to extend the charge or the battery life of your phone day to day, or you're in a serious pinch while say traveling, here are some tips to help you extend that charge. 
The two easy ones are found by clicking the gear icon in the notification shade and clicking on display. If you are in the default light mode, you can change over to dark mode. Now this uses an OLED display, which means each individual pixel is illuminated when there's light going through it. If you change it to dark mode and it goes pitch black, it means that the pixel is not on, which means it's not utilizing energy or power from your battery. That's one way you can increase your battery life. Another thing is in motion smoothness. If you are in the adaptive mode, Mode, it does have options to go below 60 hertz to 1 hertz to help alleviate some of the power draw of going up to 120 hertz. You want to lock it in at 60 hertz, you can do that and it will help get you a little bit more battery life throughout the day. I like adapted though because it looks nice and smooth. Now if you need some serious battery savings, you can go really extreme. You can turn off things like your Bluetooth, your GPS, your Wi-Fi, turn your brightness all the way down or as low as you possibly can and that will give you a lot more better life. If you're in like a dire, dire situation, you can go to your settings, go to battery, and then you can click on power saving. Now power saving will help you with some of those things, but also limit your CPU speed and your brightness, turn off always on display and things like that. So that can get you through a long period of time with the most essential features if you're in a pinch. But I would strongly advise having a charger or battery bank with you when you're traveling. And if you wanna know which ones I use and I travel with, there are links down below in the description. Now, when you're spending a lot of money on your smartphone, like the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, you wanna be able to use it for a long time. A lot of people are using their phones for more than a year or two. They might be using it for three to five years. So you want to extend the entire lifetime of the battery so it can hold a charge for a long time. Here is a tip to protect the battery on your phone. And swipe down from the top and click on the gear icon. Go over here to battery. There's this feature here that's called battery protection. If you turn this on, you have a few different options here. The first option is basic. That means that once it hits 100% of charge, it will stop charging again until it reaches 95% battery life and you can charge up again there. You have the adaptive one. This is uh, probably a good one. So you can use the maximum while you're asleep and switch to basic before you wake up. So it is a little bit smarter about when to adjust the protection on your battery, whether you're sleeping or you're awake, or if you want to go maximum, and this is the best way to extend the battery life on your phone, especially if you're using it for five years, might be a good idea. It prevents your battery from charging any further than 80% there are some um, issues that you can have by going all the way to 100% to all the way to 0%. So you kind of want to avoid going to the extremes over and over and over again on, on your battery. This is a great way to help it. Whether or not you get to 0% though is uh, on you. So <laughs> I think I'm going to go with uh, adaptive. That seems like it's pretty smart to me. If you ever have a friend who is in a pinch or maybe you have an accessory that uh, is running low on battery and you don't happen to be near a power plug or have a charger or battery bank with you, there's a neat feature that's built into the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra or 24 series that can help uh, provide a bit of battery life. So swipe down from the notification shade, hit the gear icon, swipe down to your battery option, and then swipe down to wireless power sharing. Turn that on and it's ready to charge. So we're just gonna take this, we're gonna grab these Galaxy Buds right here. The light is on and it is charging. This also works with phones. So if you have a phone with wireless charging, you can put it on here and you can see that it'll start charging. It's always nice to have in a pinch. And you also have a setting here where you can change when it will stop providing that wireless power sharing depending on your battery life. So once my battery hits 30%, it's not gonna wirelessly power share anymore, you know, so you have a battery as well. Hey, have you ever used your phone at night? Say you're laying in bed, trying to go into bed and the screen, even though you turn it all the way down, still feels really bright. So it kind of seems a bit much or you're outside and you need even more brightness. Well, there are some settings here to help with that. All right, let's try to go with the dim one. So let's swipe down from the notification shade and click on the gear icon. If you go to accessibility, you can go to vision enhancements and you'll see an option here to click on extra dim. And you can see that it's just getting a little bit darker here. So that's a clever way to, you know, not make this as bright at nighttime. Now, if you click on back a couple times to go back to the main settings menu and swipe up until you get to display, there is an option here for extra brightness. So that will allow it to get even brighter. This is 
also available in here on the notification shade. If you click on the little three dot here on the brightness slider and you see extra brightness here and you can see that's getting brighter. So that can be even nicer when you're outside and you happen to need it. Now the extra brightness option is only available if you have adaptive brightness turned off. See how it went away there? Hey, did you know that the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra allows you to have a wallpaper that will change depending on the time of day and like what's going on outside? It's called a photo ambient wallpaper. It's kind of crazy. Let me show you. So go to your settings, click on the gear icon, scroll all the way down to advanced features. So here it is here. It's the yellow icon. Then click on labs and then tap on photo ambient wallpaper. Let's turn it on. But there's more to the photo ambient wallpaper. Go to your home screen, tap and hold on it. Go to wallpaper and style. Click on change wallpapers and go to creative or you might have like a shortcut here. This is photo ambient. Just click on that one. It says see how advanced intelligence changes your own photo based on the time and weather. Works best with outdoor photos taken during the day. So we'll click on try now and it's going to give you a, a quick link to your gallery. So let's click on this one for instance and then it'll show you what it looks like at different times. So you can see here there's like rain and then snow and then it's generating all these other different options here that is contingent on the weather outside. Kind of neat. There's been a lot of fuss about the iPhones always on display and lock screen features and a lot of those are actually available on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Let me show you. Tap and hold on your home screen and you'll see this little settings menu pop up at the bottom. Click on wallpaper and style and then click on your lock screen. Now you'll see a bunch of things are highlighted over here. So you can click on your clock, change the way it looks to a calendar, or even change the font if you want to. Down below here, you can add widgets for various things like your calendar clock, reminders. Then you have your quick icons here as well. You can do details, icons. So those are like your notifications and whatnot. You can also add your contact information if you want to do that in case your phone gets lost and someone actually wants to be a decent human being and return it to you. And then you have options for the quick launch option options on the left and, and right here so you can choose a specific app to launch. Now what about that always on display feature that's like on the iPhone? Let me show you how to do that. Swipe down, click on the gear icon and swipe all the way down to lock screen and AOD or always on display. Now click on always on display and then show lock screen wallpaper. So let me show you the comparison of what it looks like now. So if I turn it off, the always on display only has time and your icons and stuff like that. It doesn't have any wallpaper there. Now if I turn on show lock screen wallpaper. If I turn it off now, you'll see that the wallpaper is still there it's showing up and it looks a lot more like what you see on an iPhone now. That may have uh, an impact on your better life, but it does look pretty cool. Now there's been a lot of hype about the always on display and all those features on the iPhone, but here's a way to one up it with the Samsung Galaxy S24. So yeah, you can do your always on display with the wallpaper still showing like this. So let's do it even better and hold on your wallpaper here and tap on wallpaper and style. Now you can change your wallpaper, click on the one for the lock screen, hit wallpapers. Now here's what's really cool. If you click on the gallery for video and you choose an actual video, you can hit done. And now your lock screen looks super dope because now Look at it. <laughs> it is this cool animated star field. How awesome is that? I don't see that on an iPhone. And if you want to get this lock screen wallpaper, I've made it available to channel members. So hit that join button that's next to that subscribe button. Hey, did you know that you can use AI to generate wallpapers on your Samsung Galaxy S24 device? It's pretty cool. Let me show you. Go ahead and tap and hold on your home screen. Let's see the wallpaper and style icon here at the bottom menu and click on change wallpapers. Scroll down to creative and you'll see probably a shortcut to generative, but in case you don't see it there, you can click on creative and see the options that are available. And then you see generative. Now here you have a bunch of different categories. Let's click on imaginary. And then now you can type in something depending on what you're interested in. So a surreal, let's say castles. Oh, I just saw some castles while I was in Ireland uh, made of uh, obsidian and shades of pink and purple. Let's choose blue and indigo and then generate. And it's going to use generative AI to create a custom Whoa, that's pretty cool. Uh, it will generate a custom wallpaper for you. And there it is. How cool is that?
Ah, hey, did you know that the Samsung Galaxy S24 has a screensaver feature that's kind of like an old school Windows computer? Pretty cool, let me show you. Go ahead and swipe down the notification shade and hit the gear icon. And now you're gonna click on display here. And then there's a feature that's called screen saver. There it is at the bottom, click on that. And now you can choose colors, your photos, photo frame, things from Google Photos if you wanna use that. We'll just choose the colors one just to see what that looks like. So it's a nice little screen saver here that looks really cool. Ooh, I like that. So this is what happens when you plug in your phone to charge it. Now the other options are like photo table or photo frame. So you click the gear icon, just choose camera and then click on back and preview. And we'll see a bunch of different shots that I took while I was in uh, California and Ireland recently. So it'll just show up like that. Pretty cool. Hey, do you want to like spice up the way that your call background looks like when you receive a call? Well, you can do that on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Let me show you. Go ahead and open up your phone app here. And then there's a little dot, dot, dot in this top top right corner, click on that and click on settings. Now you can see an option here for call background. So let's click on that. And now you can change what your background is. So here, here's a, that, an image there, you know, that'll pop up for your call background. But you can do something a little bit more interesting here. Let's choose a video. And right now I now have this here. It's a video that will show up whenever I get a phone call, which is pretty cool. There's a surprising amount of things trying to hack you out there in the world. You know, those scary things that you hear about plugging your phone into at an airport. Well, there's a feature on the Samsung Galaxy that can help prevent those issues from occurring. Let me show you. Swipe down from the notification shade and hit the gear icon. Scroll all the way down to security and privacy. And then you'll have an option here that says auto blocker. Click on that one and turn it on. So this blocks apps from unauthorized sources, turns on app security checks, and blocks commands by a USB-C cable. So the first two are options to prevent uh, any sort of apps that have code in it to mess with your phone or compromise you. Additionally, to prevent software updates when you plug into those cables, you have an option down here as well. And lastly, you have an option here for message app protection. So it blocks images suspected of containing malware in your messaging app, which is crazy that an image could have malware, but this helps protect you from that. This is one of my favorite features of the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, and it gives you all the info you need at just a circle away. So all you have to do is tap and hold at the bottom area where you would swipe up and then circle in a certain area and it'll search for things. So if you want to, this is like the best part. If you take a picture of something, maybe you're looking at furniture or like shoes or you know clothes or whatever, you can just open up that image there, tap and hold, and then circle to search, and it'll pull it up and right here, here, we see a whole bunch of places that you can buy a copy of that classic iconic Michael Jackson jacket that I just saw at the Grammy Museum recently. I love this feature. I totally use it for finding furniture. Like I took a picture of a lamp that I saw recently when I was in Ireland and I was like, oh man, I want that one. So I took a picture of it, circled a search, and now I know where I can buy it. Look at that, all, all the options right there. How easy is that? Great for furnishing your home. Now there's an interesting quirk with One UI that I have a fix for. If you swipe up, on your Samsung device, you see all your apps. And if you swipe down, uh, you see your apps again. That seems a bit redundant and weird. I would want to see my notification shade, especially on this big old display. It's, you know, it's kind of hard to reach the top. You know, you know what I mean? So if you tap and hold on your home screen, click your settings icon here and you scroll down. There's an option here that says swipe down for notification panel. So instead of swiping up and you get apps and then swiping down to get apps, you get, <gasps> woo your notification shade. One of the great things about Android and the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra is that you have a lot of customization options like controlling the way that your notifications are displayed in your notification bar and including that percentage for your battery up. So let me show you how you can customize the way everything looks and operates on your phone. Swipe down from the top, click the gear icon, go to notification settings or notifications right here, and then click on advanced settings. Now we have the option to control a lot of different things here. You can show the three most recent notifications. So you don't have like a whole bunch of things over the top, the number of notifications. That way you can just see the number of notifications that you have there. Now, the other thing that I like having is showing the battery percentage there instead of a little like icon for how much battery life you have. So if you click on that, you can see exactly how much battery life you have. But speaking of percentages, over 94.2% of you are not subscribed. So please consider subscribing. And if you want to receive notifications when 
I post a new video, go ahead and tap that bell icon. You see what I did there? Oh, you've probably experienced this and had anxiety like me. You get a notification and then you accidentally dismiss it and it's gone. You don't know what it was for. What app? Was it a text message? Was it important? I don't, I don't know. Well, on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra and Samsung devices, there's a really neat feature called notification history that allows you to not miss a notification again. Let me show you. So see, I have this notification here. Oh, and I swipe it. Oh no, it's gone. Bummer. If you swipe down, click on the gear icon and swipe down to notifications, there's a feature under advanced settings called notification notification history. Now it is on. So you can see a whole bunch of different things here that I've dismissed. Now here's the thing, anything that you have received and dismissed before you turn on notification history, it won't show up. So you have to turn it on and then it'll show up here and you can see what app it came from and what the message looked like. And if you want to find out more information, maybe you're kind of nerdy, you can see what apps are giving you the most notifications out of all of them. Hey, if you're finding tons of value in this video and want to say thanks, the super thanks feature is enabled. It's kind of like tipping through YouTube. Also, channel memberships is enabled and that's where you can get that really cool animated background and other features that are available to channel members. And of course, if you use those affiliate links, those help out a ton. Not only did this video take over 10 hours to film, it has taken over 105 hours to edit it. That means combined, it almost takes as many hours as tips in this whole entire video. It's crazy. So any of you who wanna support me, I really appreciate it. I don't have a sponsor for this video, so it means a lot, but thanks for watching. All right, let's get back to the tips and uh, make sure you share this with your friends. See ya. Do you ever get a bunch of notifications, maybe feel a bit overwhelmed by it or you're busy? Well, there are some features on the Samsung Galaxy like the S24 Ultra that allows you to kind of dismiss it for a temporary period of time. So let me show you two options for that. Say I have this text message here. If I click on the little down carrot here, I can do remind in one hour and it'll remind you in an hour. You can also swipe down and click on the gear icon, click on notifications, click on advanced settings, and then choose the show snooze button and that'll snooze things as well. That one's a little bit different than remind me in an hour because that one's a suggestion for specifically an hour. So if you swipe down from the notification shade, find that notification, hit that down care icon and you'll see here, there's a little bell icon there now. So if you click on that one, now you can choose something a little bit more specific. So you have a little bit more control over when you're reminded about that notification. Now there's been a lot of fuss about this dynamic island on the iPhone, but did you know that the Samsung Galaxy phones have had something kind of similar to it? Normally when you get a notification, it just shows up like this on your phone, but you can make it look a little bit more like what the dynamic island is doing, but for your notifications. Go ahead and swipe down, click on the gear icon, go to your notifications setting here and click on notification pop-up style. You can choose brief. It'll pop up a little bit like that thing, like a dynamic island. Now you can make it a little bit more fun. Swipe down for the notification shade, hit your gear icon, click on notifications, and now click on notification pop-up style. Instead of detailed, which it defaults to, click on brief. And now you have uh, a bunch of other features that are unique to Samsung phones. So click on edge lighting style. You can also change how the edges or borders of your phone reacts when you get that notification. Well, let's be honest, it's not the dynamic island. It's just kind of similar. In, in nature, it has that pop-up for notifications, but the dynamic island on the iPhone can do way more. Perhaps inspired by Samsung? I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments. Have you ever gotten like a bunch of text messages or phone calls and your phone is just buzzing and making tons of noise and you just want to mute it all. There's a neat little feature that helps with that in a simple gesture. We'll go ahead and swipe down, click on the gear icon. Or we're just gonna go to the little search icon here and type in motion and gestures here. It's in advanced features and then click on it right here. Now you have an option here for mute with gesture. So mute incoming calls and alarms are putting your hand over the screen or turning your phone face down. That means that when you get a call and you wanna mute it, all you have to do is turn it over and that's it. Have you ever wanted to glance over at your Samsung device and see what the notification was or what time it is and you didn't want to pick it up, unlock it in order to see it? Well, there's a really neat feature that allows you just 
double tap and now you can see what your screen looks like. Let me show you how. Swipe down from the notification shade, hit the gear icon, go to advanced features and then click on motions and gestures. You can double tap to turn on the screen or double tap to turn off the screen. So there's a lot of options there. So now when I want to get a look at it, I can double tap on it. And if I want to turn it back down, I can do that. Um, that makes it very easy to see what's on your screen. So there's this neat feature that will give you an alert when you've missed a message or phone number when you've picked up your phone. If maybe it's been sitting there for a little while, it'll vibrate. So you pick it up and now it just vibrated in my hand. Let me show you how to turn that on. So if you swipe down and go to your gear icon right there. Go ahead and click on advanced features and click on motions and gestures. You'll see an option for alert when phone picked up. When you have a notification for a you know text message or whatever else or a phone call that came in that you missed, the moment that you pick up your phone, it'll vibrate and let you know that you missed something. One of the cool things that was added to the iPhone recently is widget stacks, where you're able to have a bunch of widgets here and swipe through it like this. But did you know that you can do that on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra? Let me show you how. So all you have to do is place down a widget on your phone already and then click on it. And then now you have a create stack option here. Now you can add other things onto this that match that same form factor or size. So this is really great if you happen to have a music app, you can swipe between the stack. So instead of going you know, vertically, this one's a horizontal stack here. You can keep adding to it, it's awesome. So now you have a ton of options for multiple widgets without taking up a ton of your home screen, which I love. Here's a crazy feature that the moment I heard about it, I was like, oh, duh, that is so helpful on an Android phone. So let me show you. All you have to do, go to your, your text messages, click on it, and then now what you can do, if you want to make the text messages bigger or smaller, it's just pinch and zoom. How obvious is that? This is so easy. How many of you are like, well done. <laughs> hey, did you know that if you have a video playing on your Samsung Galaxy phone, like the S24 Ultra, and you have a video playing in picture in picture mode, say from like Netflix or Disney Plus, or even YouTube, if you have premium, premium is the key thing to make that work. You can pinch and zoom and resize where it goes and even snaps into place. But I just love that I can make it bigger and multitask from doing that. Hey, did you know that there's an easy gesture when you're watching YouTube, like this video right now, that allows you to go to full screen and all you have to do is just swipe up. Boop. Now you're at full screen and there's swipe down and your normal player. Swipe up, full screen. How convenient. You're welcome. Here is a multitasking feature that I use all the time on Android. I'm going to show you how to do it. This allows you to easily move between multiple apps really fast. So all you have to do is double tap on the app overview button two times and it'll switch between the last app. Now I know a lot of you are still using the three button navigation at the bottom, but some of you are actually moved over to gesture. So let me show you how that looks over here. All you have to do is swipe from the gesture area and it'll bring up your last app here, but it can do even more because it's like a card view. So you can keep swiping and to go to different apps here. But this is an awesome way to move between apps when you're in gesture mode. Now, if you want to be able to change the navigation style of your phone or even the order of the buttons to the correct one where the back button's on the left, all you have to do is swipe down from the notification shade, hit that gear icon, click on the search icon and type in navigation and you'll see an option for navigation bar. Click on that one here and you'll highlight the navigation bar option here and go to the more options for buttons and you can change it to the correct one or you can change it to swipe gestures and you'll see a resets down here. And now I have a little swipe options. Which one do you prefer? Do you prefer the buttons or gestures? And are you a heathen that uses the button order in the wrong order? Or are you going to use the back button on the left? Because you're going back. If you're getting a Samsung Galaxy phone and you want something that is not so complex with tons of features and all these different things, maybe it's for an older uh, parent or grandparent you know, or a kid even, there's a, a neat easy mode that makes this look way different. Let me show you. So what you're going to do is swipe down from the notification setting, hit the gear icon, scroll down to display, and then you have an option called easy mode. Click on that one and it has a more simple layout for everything. Everything's bigger. It's a high contrast keyboard. And now it looks like this. Look how big everything is. The touch areas are a lot easier to interact with. You can see that the text is big and bold. So this is really great for accessibility and for you know just being able to easily tap on different things on your screen.
While the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra comes with 12 gigabytes of RAM, sometimes when you're using some really intensive apps, they'll just automatically close on. Here's how to keep those apps open and not close on you. Say for instance, you have something like CapCut Open, which is a video editing app. You swipe up or go to your app overview screen and tap on the icon for the app. You can tap on keep open. Now you'll see this little lock icon show up here. And now what will happen is if you go to something else, say you're gonna take a break from video editing for a little bit, it can be a lot, watch a little bit of Loki, you can go to that and it'll keep your app open in CapCut without having to reset and refresh everything so you don't lose your spot. So even though the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra comes with 12 gigabytes of RAM, did you know that there's a way to get free RAM? And swipe down, click on the gear icon and type in the search bar RAM. And then you're gonna click on RAM Plus, and it'll check your memory and see what's available. You can also clean out things from your memory, like your wallpaper and things like that, and click clean now. And now you also have RAM Plus. So you can actually increase the amount of RAM that you're utilizing. I have it already set to eight gigabytes. So now I have 20 gigabytes of RAM available to me. That's pretty nice if you really need that. Just keep in mind that it's technically using your storage and potentially if you happen to use your phone for seven or eight years, you might have some degradation of of the quality of that RAM. But most of you will probably replace your phone in two to four years, so. I wouldn't worry about too much. Now with this massive screen on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, you wanna make a good use of it. So let me show you a neat multitasking feature that I use all the time. So what we're gonna do is bring up, you know, whatever you're looking at. Say it's this amazing recipe for spaghetti carbonara. If you swipe up and go to your app overview screen and tap on the icon, you can open and split screen view. Now it's gonna ask you what other app you wanna have open below it. So I'm gonna tap in notes. Yeah, I can take some notes on, on you know, maybe what ingredients I need, but there's more to it. You can readjust how much space it takes up. So maybe you don't need to see everything here. And if you don't like this orientation of the webpage up top and the notes at the bottom, tap on the three button icon here and you just hit the swap. And when you wanna just close out out of it, you can just go like this and now it's in full screen. There's a pretty neat feature on Samsung Galaxy devices for your notifications that kind of gives a little bubble like Facebook chat heads like back in the day. That's pretty neat. That makes it really easy to just pop in and check out an app and then pop out. Let me show you. So swipe down from the notification shade and hit the gear icon. Swipe down and click on notifications and go to advanced settings. Now you're gonna click on floating notifications, tap on that and you have smart pop-up view. So now you need to figure out what app you wanna use. So I'm gonna use this app right here. Go to your app overview screen, tap on the app icon and tap on open and pop-up view. Now it'll show up in this orientation here. It's in a window of sorts. Go ahead and tap at the top part and click on this collapse option here. And now you see it's in this little icon right here that you can move around and then it's available so you can keep using it as you need and then tap on it. It'll pop up kind of in a window mode. If you want to close it, you can go down here and remove it or tap on it and close right there. You can change its opacity if you want to. You can do a split screen and you can see that you can change the way that the settings look right here. If you wanna utilize smart pop-up view on your Samsung Galaxy device with just a swipe, there's a feature for that. Let me show you. Swipe down from your notification shade and hit the gear icon, hit search and type in multi-window and then tap on the highlight there and you'll see swipe for pop-up view. And then I'll show you a gesture for creating smart pop-up view. So we have that on now and I'll just swipe down from the top and now it's in smart pop-up view. You can also increase the touch area of that corner to make it easier to utilize. Now we have the app open that we want to utilize for pop-up view and the wider touch area. And you can see that it works pretty easy. Sometimes you'll get the notification shade. So you want to go right in the corner right there. If you wanna go really hardcore with your multitasking and split screen and you don't wanna jump around to a bunch of different settings, there's a gesture for it that makes it really easy. Let me show you. Go ahead and swipe down, click on the gear icon, type in multi window, click on that, click on where it highlights and swipe for split screen, turn that on. And now you have an option or gesture that's at the bottom that allows you to go to split screen. All it is is two fingers and you swipe up. You can choose the app that you want. Pretty easy, isn't it awesome? And then swipe it down and then multitask again, magic. 
So while you can have a split screen option for multitasking on your Samsung Galaxy device, you're still not using the entire screen. Here's a way to utilize every single bit to get the most out of this gorgeous display. Swipe down, click on the gear icon, click search, type in multi, and you'll see multi window. Tap on that, it'll highlight over here, and then click on full screen and split screen view. Now what this does is it hides the status and navigation bar so you can see more of every app. So you swipe up from the bottom of the screen and down from the top to show the hidden bars. So now you can see it's going all the way to the top. I don't see any of the clock here, but if I bring it down, you see the clock is there. See how I, I can bring up the navigation bar at the bottom and the clock, but otherwise it disappears when I have the full screen and split screen turn on. Now multitasking on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra is awesome and having a split screen multi window option is amazing, but not all apps support it. There is a way though to force those apps to work for multi window. Let me show you. Swipe down for the top, hit the gear icon, scroll all the way down to advanced features, click on labs. Now you have this option here for multi window for all apps. Turn that on and now all apps are able to have a pop-up view or a split screen view, even if they have not been like set up to support that by the developer. Samsung will make it work that way, which is really cool. Do you work in social media or use WhatsApp and have multiple accounts? Well, a lot of those apps only allow you to have one login per device, which is really annoying. With this feature, you can have multiple logins for your social media accounts or WhatsApp or whatever else. Let me show you how. Swipe down, hit the gear icon and hit the search button and type in dual. And you'll see this dual messenger option type of, or show up here. Click on that one. And then you'll see at the bottom. So click on dual messenger and you see the different apps that are supported for multiple logins. So essentially it's duplicating the app for a second one, a second login. So you have two apps available and now we're gonna install a second copy. And boom, you have your second app right there for your other account. Hey, have you ever handed your phone over to someone to make a call or to a kid to play a game, but you don't want them snooping around and looking at other things like maybe your photos and stuff. Well, there's a really neat feature that keeps them locked in to that specific app that you gave them access to. Go ahead and swipe down from the notification shade and hit that gear icon there. Click on the search icon and type in pin and you'll see this option for pin app. Let's click on it and activate it. So now that this is activated, if you swipe up to your app overview screen, tap on your icon for the app and then tap pin this app. Now you can't get out. They just use this app. They can't snoop around. They can't swipe around. But if you want to get out of the app, they have to swipe up and hold. And now it goes back to your lock screen, which requires your pin number or your biometrics in order to get back in. And now you're out. So that's a very helpful way to make sure that someone's not going around in your phone doing something that they shouldn't. Do you always hate unlocking your Samsung Galaxy phone and wish it just kind of knew and was smarter of when it's on you and it kept it unlocked more often? Well, there's a feature to extend the unlock depending on where it is on your person and how it's being used. Let me show you. Swipe down from the notification shade and hit the gear icon and type in extend unlock. So you have this option right here, and then it'll ask for your pin number. This is your pin number, not mine. And now you have a few options here. So you can set up on body detection. So when it's on your body and can detect that movement, it'll keep your phone unlocked. And then you have trusted places. So maybe you're at home or at work, you can keep it as a trusted place and it remains unlocked. And then trusted devices. So maybe you have a watch or earbuds, and if those devices are connected to your phone, it keeps your phone unlocked. So now you don't have to always worry about typing in your pin number, getting your face, your fingerprints, your phone will be unlocked a lot. But keep in mind that comes at the expense of security. So it's up to you what you choose, but keep that in mind. We never want this to happen with our phones, but sometimes it happens. Maybe you drop it and it cracks or something weird happens with it and you need to bring it into the service center to get looked at, but you're kind of worried about someone being a little creepy and snooping through your stuff. Well, there is a neat mode on here that prevents someone from, well, being a creeper. Let me show you. Go ahead and swipe down for the notification shade, hit the gear icon, click on the search button and type in maintenance. And you have this option that's called a maintenance mode. Click on that one and you can turn on maintenance mode by tapping on this one. And it provides all these different protections like the ability to look at your pictures, messages and accounts. You can't download apps, you know, different things. It turns off the ability for the repair technician from being able to go in there and kind of snoop around, which is really helpful, especially for the woman out there. So 
looking out for you. There's also an option to create backups just in case something happens where they can't recover something or fix something on your phone and you have to get a new one. If you're like me, you like having your rotation settings locked so it's not flopping all around. There's this really neat setting here. So if you rotate it, there's a little icon that shows up in the bottom corner. If you tap on that, it will manually rotate it, but keeps it locked. So if you rotate it back to normal, you'll see the icon again and it'll manually rotate back to portrait. So that's a good way to keep your rotation settings locked, but have a little bit more control of it and to change it quickly. Look, I love a big screen like on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, but you know, unless you're a giant, it's kind of hard to reach everything. Well, there's a neat feature on here that makes it really easy to use with one hand. Swipe down for the notification shade and hit the gear icon. Hit the search button there and type in one handed mode. Tap on that one and then turn it on. And now there's a gesture to do that. All you have to do is swipe down and now it's in one handed mode and you can swipe to what side it's on with the icon there. And if you want to get out of it, just double tap and it goes full screen. Pretty sweet that you can do that. You can even resize it manually if you want to do that. If you have the button navigation style, all you have to do is double tap on the home button, but uh, you should use gestures. They're amazing. Do you ever have to like type in something over and over again, like an email address or some sort of can response of sorts? Well, there's a really easy way to create a shortcut so you don't have to type it out all the time. Let me show you. Go ahead and swipe down for the navigation shade, hit the gear icon, click on the search button, type in text shortcuts. Tap on that one and you'll see it right here. It's highlighted. Click on that. And now you can type in text shortcuts here. Add. So maybe the shortcut is, let's say, period T. And whenever you type that in, it says, this is tech today. So say you're in a note here, you hit period T and then hit enter. And now it types it all out for you. How convenient is that? You can just like put a whole paragraph in there for goodness sakes. That's Awesome. Now, I really like a lot of things about the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, but one thing I don't like is how huge this keyboard is, and I wish I could customize it. Well, you know what? I can. Let me show you. Click on this gear icon right here and click on the option for size and transparency. Now you can see right here, you can make it bigger if you want to and you're crazy or make it smaller, hit done. Now you can adjust the font size as well. So if you want to, you can make the fonts bigger or smaller. I like it, uh, you know, normal, maybe bigger. That's actually kind of nice. I'll, I'll stick with that. Now, one of the greatest things about the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra is all the customization options that you can do with it. But there's a lot more you can do with the keyboard than adjust to the size or the font size. You can actually customize the way it looks. Let me show you how. If you go to the Galaxy Store, the one that says store on your Samsung Galaxy device, and then you type in Keys Cafe, you'll see an option here for this app called Keys Cafe. Let's open it up. So now that we're in Keys Cafe, you can click on My Themes. You can go through the options that are already created or click on your new one there. So now you can go through it and adjust the color of the different keys, the style of them. There's a lot of customization options here depending on your taste. And look at this, you can do a lot. My goodness, how cool is that? You can replace the background with an, with an image if you want to. It's pretty crazy. The, the actual key has an image underneath it, which is insane. Mess around with it and have fun. Did you know that the Samsung keyboard has a lot of really neat features built into it, like Grammarly for spelling and grammar, or Giphy or Jiffy and tenor GIFs or GIFs, whatever you wanna choose? Fight about it in the comments. I'm curious which one you would choose. Let me show you how to enable it. First, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the keyboard is up. Just click on any text box somewhere, hit the gear icon. The first thing that we're gonna do is enable Grammarly. So you'll go to suggest text corrections. By default, strangely, Grammarly is not enabled. So you're gonna click check on that one and you can choose what apps benefit from it. It's defaulted to your all available apps. And then you can go all the way down here. And now there's an option called select third party content to use. So click on that. Strangely, Grammarly is not turned on here either. So let's enable it again. I'm not sure if it doesn't actually work until you enable it twice. But there's also Giphy and Tenor and then Google for translation. So and these Bitmojis and Moji Doc whatever that is. So you can enable that. So now say I go to a text message and go here. I can now add GIFs. So now you have that there. You can see all of them over here. How cool is that? Hey, check this out. I just took a screenshot with my palm. Let me show you how. This is available on Samsung Galaxy devices. Swipe down for the notification shade, hit the gear icon, go all the way down to advanced features, click on motions and gestures and click on palm swipe to capture. So once that's turned on, to swipe your palm against it, 
and now you've taken a screenshot. Hey, did you know that you can save your screenshots to the clipboard of your Samsung Galaxy keyboard so you can just paste it in other places? It's kind of cool, let me show you. Take a screenshot and then go ahead and open it up. Now you'll see the dot, dot, dot in the top right corner. Tap on that one. And now you're gonna copy it to the clipboard. So it's right there. Now I'm gonna open up a note and you can see that it's here in my clipboard. I'm just gonna paste it. And now it's in my notes, which is really cool. And then you have this clipboard right here and you can see a history of what you've copied and what your screenshots are to make it very easy to paste wherever you need. One of the great things about Android phones is the ability to customize your home screen and have a choice of where icons go instead of being forced all the way at the top. You don't want to have that all messed up. Maybe you give it to a kid and they just get all snotty and just move things around and it's annoying. Well, you can lock it. So let me show you. So tap and hold on your home screen, click that gear icon for settings, and then click on lock home screen layout. Now everything is exactly where I want it and intend it to be. Here's a really cool feature if you have guests over to your home and they wanna to connect to your Wi-Fi easily. And you know, you don't wanna give them like a crazy long password. Maybe you don't even remember it. Well, this is awesome. Swipe down from the notification shade, long hold on your Wi-Fi network. Go ahead and click on details. Click on that gear icon there. And then now that you have your Wi-Fi network up, click on QR code. It's gonna ask for your pin number. And then now you have this QR code that pops up that someone can quickly scan, or you have the quick share option for those who have an Android phone. That makes it really easy to connect to your Wi-Fi. And if you want, you can save it as an image. What if I told you that this 20 cent little sticker here unlocks a ton of power for your Samsung Galaxy S24 device. Let me show you. This right here is an NFC or RFID tag or sticker. And if you download some apps called NFC Tools and NFC Tasks, you can unlock a whole bunch of features. I personally went with the Pro Edition because you can do even more. Let me show you though. So this app is really cool because you can read the tag and get information about it. You can write to it so you can add in a record and you can add things like text, a URL. So if someone taps it, it brings up a website and copy it tag, you can erase a tag, lock a tag, read from the memory, so on and so forth. And then tasks are where it gets really cool. So you can add a task here. And this is where you can start really controlling a whole bunch of features on your phone. So you can control your networks, Wi-Fi, change your microphone settings, mute it. You can adjust your display, go to screensaver, do adaptive brightness or dark brightness, which could be really nice if you're going to bed and you just tap it on your nightstand and now you're in extra dim. Ton of different options here. And if you want to, there are more options so you can go even more advanced. So I have something really simple set up for my NFC sticker where I just tap the NFC area and it toggles on and off the flashlight and that's it. There are tons of possibilities with this sticker. You can even create routines and things like that. I personally use it a lot when I go to trade shows like CES or NAB so I can easily share my contact information like a business card or my media kit. So super cool. There's a link in the description if you wanna pick this up. You can also find more things that are cool like this sticker in my Samsung Galaxy S24 accessories video, which can be found up here or the link in the description once it's posted. Now we use our smartphones a ton and sometimes we can use it maybe perhaps a bit more than we're supposed to, or we need to get some data to find out if we're using our devices in a healthy manner. Well, there are some really great features that allow you to track how you use your phone. So if you swipe down from the notification shade and hit the gear icon, swipe all the way down to to digital well-being. And then at the bottom, you have a driving monitor. And so this can let you know of how you use your phone while you're driving, a walking monitor. So you can see how much you use your phone while walking and it can help you uh, avoid distractions when you're walking. And then a volume monitor, which is really important to me as an audio engineer. It will let you know if you are listening to things too loud and to turn it down a little bit more. That's really important because you only have two sets of ears. And once you start losing hearing ability in your ear, you don't get it back, so take care of them. One thing that's been really cool about some of the latest versions of Android is its adaptability. And you have the ability to change the color palette of your device depending on your wallpaper. And let me show you how. If you click and hold on your home screen, go to wallpaper and style, and then choose color palette. So you can manually choose your color palette if you want to do so. You can also apply that to the icons. You can see how the apply button is changing colors, especially between these. If you change your wallpaper, you can have different color palettes. So it'll adjust depending on what kind of wallpaper you're you're using. So let me show you here, the color palette now. See how it's different now? It matches what the wallpaper looks like. It's a little bit more of these earthy gold tones and stuff like that, which is really cool. So now I have this blue one. If we go here for the color palette, you can see how there's a lot of blue and cool tones and things are on the opposite side of the color wheel, like a yellow. Pretty cool. Try it out. 
say you're playing some music or a video and you wanna have some control of where the audio is actually being output. Maybe it's to a soundbar, your earbuds, or you want it to actually come out of your own device. Here's how you can do that on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. So I have something playing already. So once you have that going, you would just click on this media output option right here. Click on that. And now you can see that I have my various devices available, like my soundbar downstairs, some of my displays, like my Google Home or my uh, Pixel tablet. So you can choose that right here and adjust the volume for it easily just from clicking on media output. Hey, did you know that you can have some granular control of the audio output per app on your Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra? For example, if you are say driving on a road trip and someone in your passenger seat wants to listen to some music and you want to listen to the navigation information but you don't want to listen to the music, well you can specifically choose to have the music play on their Bluetooth device while the maps information is played on your actual phone. Let me show you how. Swipe down from the notification shade, hit the gear icon, click on sounds and vibration, and go all the way down to separate app sounds. So click on that, turn it on now, and then what you can do is you can choose to have like the YouTube video, for instance, uh, or another app that you want to add. Maybe it's Apple Music. You can have all that set up now to play out of a Bluetooth device that is connected. So now only those apps are going to the Bluetooth device, but your maps are playing out of your phone. Kind of need to have a little bit of more control over app specific output. Here's a really cool feature that's amazing if you want to share the ability to play through a Bluetooth speaker with others. Great for like a party. One of the many amazing features on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Let me show you. Go to your settings, swipe down and hit the gear icon and then type in music share. And then you'll see this option for music share right here. Now, the way that this works is that you have the ability to share control of this device with other people because you make it available. Once I've turned on music share, I can share this device with my contacts only or everyone. You can have them ask permission in order to connect to it and disconnect from them after a period of uh, no actual activity. So you can see the different devices that I have available for them, including the Sony speaker that I have right here. So I have some music playing from this phone right here on this speaker. And now I'm gonna bring out this other phone that is connected to this speaker through the Samsung Galaxy device. And now I can hit play. And now I'm playing something else through it. So that's pretty awesome. I can pause it and now go back here. And now it's playing from this phone. So pretty cool that I have the ability to control that between devices. All of them sharing this Bluetooth speaker through my Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Awesome. One of the great features that has been added to Android and kind of unified this year is Quick Share. It's kind of like AirDrop for Android. So what I'm going to do is go to like my gallery. I have this image of myself. I'm gonna click on the share icon here and then type on click share. And then I'll see that my phone over here is showing up. So I'm gonna tap on that one. And then once I do that, what will happen is I'll get a notification over here saying that I'm receiving an image from my Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, I can see that this photo is now in my download. Pretty awesome, right? Do you know that you can launch an app of your choice by double clicking on the side button for the power button? It'll bring up the camera like this. You can change it by going to your settings, hitting the gear icon, hit search and click side button. And you have the option to quick launch the camera or open an app of your choice. So you can open a specific app. So it could be really great for like your airline miles or whatever, whenever you're traveling. You can also press and hold and it'll open up at Bixby, but I'm gonna keep it at the quick launch of the camera. But what app would you choose? Do you kind of hate it when you hold down the power button on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra and then it brings up Bixby? Here's how to disable that and get the power menu like it should be. Swipe down on your notification shade, hit that gear icon, search for side key, and then you see side button here, we'll tap on that one. And then instead of press and hold for waking Bixby, so you can tap on power off menu. When I hold it down, you get that option instead, which is how it should be. If you wanna have more control of your power button when you hold it down, that's beyond just the power menu or Bixby, let's say you wanna change it to the Google Assistant, here is how you can do that on your Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. You're going to go to the Galaxy Store. So it's not the Google Play Store, it's the Galaxy Store, the Samsung Store. So you click on Store, you're gonna find an app called Good Lock. You're going to download and install that. Now when you open that up, there are two different columns. There's the Makeup and then the Life Up. Let's click on the Life Up one. And then you're gonna scroll down until you find the one that says Registrar. So we have the Registrar 
here. Now, once this is open, we'll have the ability to control or map out what this button does. So let's install everything. So you'll see the option here for side key press and hold action. Now we can turn it on and you have all these different options that you can choose for holding it down, like turning on and off your flashlight, mute or unmute things, show notifications, show recent apps, back button or open app. So now you'll have to click on the gear icon and you can find different options for what you can launch with it, but we'll choose the assistant right here. Now when I hold it down, boom, Google Assistant and it works like that. So that's pretty awesome. So not too long ago, there's this craze with the iPhone where you could back tap on the back of it and it would do certain actions. Well, did you know you can do that on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra? Let me show you how. So you wanna to go to the Samsung Galaxy Store, the Samsung Store, not the Google Play Store. Click on Store. So you're gonna to want to install this app called Good Lock. And once that's installed, open it. You'll see two columns, click on Life Up. And then you're gonna find the one that says Registrar. I already have it installed here, but click on Registrar. And now once you've opened that, you'll have the opportunity to adjust what the back tap action does. So click on Back tap action and turn it on. And then you can create an event detection notification just in case. And you can set up what happens when you have a double tap. So now I've set up what happens when I double tap on the back and what I triple tap on the back and you can adjust the sensitivity. So now when I double tap, it'll open up the expert raw camera app for me. Now, if I triple tap, it'll open up the normal camera app for me. So I can change what happens there. So really nice that I can adjust that to get the option that I want. Did you know that there's a modes feature on your Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra and maybe you don't know what modes are? Let me show you. Down from the notification shade, hit the gear icon, search for modes and routines click on that. And now you have a whole bunch of different options right here for modes. Now you can have customization settings here. So this one is a little bit more in depth features here that you can have. But if you want to go to mode, so say you're going to sleep, you can turn it on and you can set it up. So you turn it on manually or automatically. And then you can choose what happens when you're in this mode, like do not disturb. You can add other actions. You can go to grayscale, dark mode, you know, eye comfort shield, all those different things. Another option for when you're in the theater, driving, exercising, relaxing, so on and so forth. So uh, maybe you turn off uh, text messages and things like that uh, when you're in driving mode. What would you use it for? Let me know in the comments and let's see if we can get some ideas that we can share with each other. Did you know that you can create a routine on your Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra? Essentially, it'll do a whole bunch of tasks automatically based upon what you create. It's essentially an if this then that statement. Let me show you how. Swipe down for the notification shade, hit the gear icon, search for modes, and routines, click on that right there and go to the bottom area and click on routines and now hit the plus sign. And here you have the option to create an if this then that statement. Say you have a fitness equipment of some sort or earbuds that you wear whenever you work out, you can choose what triggering event you want to have uh, as your if statement. So let's choose a Bluetooth device and choose the device that's connected to. So if my Galaxy Buds Pro 2 uh, are connected, that's a condition. And then we choose the then statement. So maybe you have a fitness app that you always use and you want to choose that. You can choose from apps. There's a whole bunch of other options you can choose as well. And now you're able to just start working out because you just connected your earbuds to your Galaxy S24 Ultra. Pretty cool stuff that you can do here. There's a lot of flexibility and power available to you. Now, I would love to know what kind of routines that you use or would like to use. So let me know in the comments so we can share ideas with each other and make our phones do even more cool things. Hey, did you know that the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra has free live TV on it, at least in the United States. Let me show you how to watch it. All you have to do is swipe up to your app drawer and in the Samsung folder, it's usually consolidated there, or maybe it's not in there, but you wanna find the app that's just called TV. Open that up and you have a whole bunch of live TV that you can look at. There's categories for all of it, depending on what you wanna watch. There's stuff for kids on here if you want. There's Teletubbies, whoa, nightmare feel right there. Conan O'Brien, you can watch all this live TV on here right now, which is pretty cool. They do have some ads on here to keep that in mind. That's how it's free. But you know, you have a bunch of different things you can watch. You can watch 21 Jump Street, Baywatch, whatever you want to do that's on here. There's even the local news and national news. Pretty cool that this is free on your phone. 
If you ever wanted to watch something and you can't listen to it, maybe you don't have earbuds available, the battery ran out, or you're in public, can't listen to it out loud on your device, but you still wanna see what is being said. Or maybe there's no closed captions and you just kinda of wanna have them available. Well, there's this really neat feature called Live Transcribe. All you have to do is hit up or down on the volume on your Android device, and on my Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, I can hit the dot, dot, dot right there, and there's this little icon that's right there. If I tap on that, it'll start creating live captions so I can see what is being said. So you can see right here, and you can change what the language is if you want by adding a language, but I like it right here just fine. You can change the settings here, however you want, and move it around. And if you wanna dismiss it, you can either swipe down to dismiss it or hit the volume button, hit the dot, dot, dot again, and hit the icon again to dismiss it. Hey, have you ever found yourself on a call with someone who speaks a different language? Well, one of the best things about the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra is the ability to live translate your calls. So whatever you're saying is translated into their language and whatever they say is translated into your language. Pretty cool. Here's how you enable it. Go to your phone app, click on the dot dot dots right there, go to settings and click on live translate. Now you have to turn this on first. Now you can adjust things a little bit so you can mute their voice so you're not confused and it's not overlapping or whatever. And you can choose what kind of voice it sounds like. You add different voices voices, depending on what you want to do and how fast it reads it off, as well as what language it's in. So we have English and Spanish uh, here already. Okay, now we're connected. We're going to click on call assistant, and now we're going to choose live translate. So now you can see that's translating between the two. It's super cool, super helpful if you need to make those really important calls and you just don't happen to be able to speak each other's language. One of the cool features on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra is interpreter mode. So if you are traveling to say another country and you don't speak the language or they don't speak English or your language, you can actually have it interpret and translate live right there from your device. To enable this, swipe down, click on the gear icon, scroll all the way down to advanced features. Features. You're gonna click on advanced intelligence and then click on interpreter. So now you have the options that are available. So language packs, you can download additional ones for different countries and languages. There's also voice styles and a tap to talk option. I think this is probably the wisest choice because it's a little bit more manual and easy to use. So let's open up interpreter. If we swipe down, you'll see it's in your quick settings right here. And if it's not, you could edit it and add things to your quick settings uh, based on this, but it's already there for me. So so let's open it up and then here we have interpreter. Hello, where is the bathroom? ¿Dónde está el baño? Lo siento, no sé. I'm sorry, I don't know. So there is interpreter. Pretty neat, right? Man, so many AI features on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Here's one that allows you to translate live in your keyboard. So say we have, uh, this is a test message. What happens? Now you'll see this little sparkly thing over here. Let's click on that and can choose chat translation. So now that we've clicked on that, you can adjust what language it goes into. So we have auto into English. So we can change it here to Spanish. You can add languages if you want to but we'll just stick with Spanish here. So what you're gonna do is you just type as normal. So hello, can you understand what I'm saying? And then I'm gonna click this little AI magic button right here and click on chat translation. I'll choose English to Spanish and then just hit send. And then what will happen is automatically change it over here. Boom, just like that. Here's a really cool AI feature built into the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra that is awesome if you're a student or you're taking a bunch of notes and you need to, you know, summarize things, format things, or even translate. Let me show you. You can open up a bunch of different things. Maybe it's your note app. We'll just click on this little AI button here. So this is like a whole little article there and you can auto format it. So let's click auto format. So you have headlines and bullets and it'll automatically format it based upon that right here. If you want to, you can also change it to a different type of formatting. So meeting, so more of like a bullet point style. Boom. Just like that. You can also summarize it, which is really awesome. Boom, just like that. And if you want to, you can correct the spelling. If there's anything, you know, grammar and spelling, even cooler, translate it. So let's translate it into Spanish and translate. Boom, just like that. How cool is that? You can even change it right here. I have French installed, you can add more languages. Huge for business and schoolwork, but I'd love to know what you would use this for.
One of the best features of the Google Pixel 8 and 8 Pro is the ability to use a recorder app to get a full transcription of the recording. Samsung wasn't going to be left behind for long. Using the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, you can easily record lectures, interviews, or brainstorming sessions and let the S24 Ultra transcribe them for you. Here's how to do that. So I have this voice recording that I already recorded prior to this filming, and you have this option here that says transcribe. So I click on transcribe and we'll transcribe it into English. You also have the ability ability to transcribe it into another language, but don't worry, you can translate it later on if you want to. And it'll be able to identify and label different voices. So if it's like a interview or podcast, you can see that. So see speaker one and speaker two. Now let's click on summary and I'll use the AI to summarize everything. You can see all this right here with headlines and everything. It has keywords in there as well if you want to do that. And another thing that you can do is you can take that transcript or that summary and hit the dot 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 right there and you can copy copy it into your Samsung Notes. It's right here. So now it's in the Samsung Notes and it also has a voice recording there as well if you want to reference it. But if it's in a Samsung Note, you know what that means. You have the AI in there. So you can tap the AI there. You can auto format things, summarize correct spelling or translate it. So we can translate it now, translate into French if you want to. Pretty cool stuff that you can do there. Pretty awesome, especially if you're doing like foreign relations for business. Awesome. Have you ever gone onto a web page and you're like, I don't want to read all that. What's a TLDR? Or or maybe you need to translate it. You can do that on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Let me show you how. So I have this really great article and review of the S24 Ultra by my friend Ben. And what I can do is just go here to this magic AI button here tap on it and now I can summarize the whole review here. There it is. And if you want to, you can copy it and then paste it into Samsung Notes or you can translate it into another language just like this. Now it's in Spanish. Or if you want to, you can translate the whole entire page into a different language. Let's translate into Spanish. And now it's translated the whole page into Spanish. Now the one downside though, is it only works in the Samsung internet browser. It does not work in Chrome or Opera or whatever else you're using. You have to use the Samsung internet browser. Well, the S24 Ultra talks a lot about the 200 megapixel lens and to a lesser extent, the 50 megapixel lens. Those settings aren't on by default. You have to turn them on. So we're gonna go up to the camera app right here and we'll tap on the 12 megapixels and you have the option for 50 megapixels, which does change the focal lengths that you have available. So it's one to five. And if we click on 200 megapixels, we go to one X. Now keep in mind that not only do you have a limitation and what focal ranges or lengths that you have available, depending on what megapixel size that you choose. But the lack of shutter lag that's available on the 12 megapixels will disappear. So you'll have a little bit of that lag return on the 50 megapixels or 200 megapixels. On top of that, they do take up more storage space. So keep that in mind. Thankfully, the base storage is higher on the S24 Ultra than some other phones out there. And when you're ordering the S24 Ultra, maybe opt for the one with the higher storage option. One of the coolest use cases for the 200 megapixel option on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra is the ability to take one photo and get multiple photos out of it. Let me show you. So this photo right here, I took in 200 megapixel mode. And what I can do is click on edit and maybe I just wanna crop into this area right here. And then what I can do is click on save as copy and I'll swipe back. Now we're going to edit over here and change this one to just have that area. And we'll click as save as copy and we'll swipe over again and edit again and just kind of crop out this area right here and click as save as copy. The 200 megapixels gives you a ton of resolution. So it's really great if you wanna print something out like a poster or whatever, but also the ability to create different images out of that one image. So see how clear this is? So maybe you don't have to be so concerned about the way that you frame your shots in 200 megapixel mode. One of the coolest things to find on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra that wasn't there for the S23 Ultra is the ability to record 8K video even on the telephoto lens. Let me show you. Here we are in the video mode here and I'll tap on this little setting here and you have the ability to click on 8K here and it's 8K 30, but you can also hit 5X and now it's shooting in 8K on the telephoto. Pretty awesome. And you can have all that resolution. Amazing. 
A huge upgrade to the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra that wasn't there in prior models is the ability to record 4K 120 frames per second for slow motion video. Let me show you how. So I've opened up the camera app and I've gone into this menu for the resolution and frame rate and you can see that there's no 120 frames per second. So where is it? We click on more and click on pro video. Once you've clicked on that, you can click up here. Now you have 120 frames per second in ultra wide and wide. So now you have a really convenient video that you can slow down a whole bunch in 4K, which makes things look amazing. So Google has had a really neat feature called Object Eraser that has gotten a lot of attention. And in many ways, Samsung has had their own as well. But now it's been upgraded with AI. Let me show you how it works. So go to your gallery and pick out an image. Now what you can do is hit on the edit button there. And now click on the AI little button there it'll scan things out for you and you can tap and draw around anything that you want to get rid of. This is especially nice if you happen to use the S Pen because it gives you a little bit more granularity of what you want to remove. So now I've selected all the people on the street. If you don't want to draw around them, you can also just tap on them and it'll select them, which is pretty cool. You can tap and hold on them to move them around if you want to, or you can simply erase them. So we're going to erase them. And now we have the empty space there and we're going to click on generate. And wow, that's pretty dang good. You can see the original. Surprising, that's not bad at all. What do you think? How do you think it did? Another thing you could do is move someone somewhere else, increase the size or make them bigger or smaller, depending on what you want to do. It looks okay, not as good as the magic eraser type thing. Now, one of my favorite features on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra is generative fill, which is gonna come in really handy for my crooked images. Let me show you. So I took this image over here when I was in Dublin, but it's crooked. So what I'm gonna do is click on that AI thing there, the icon there, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna straighten out this image. Now, if I straighten out the image, you'll notice here, they have all these extra things around the border where there isn't actually an image that was captured. If you click on generate, it'll fill in those gaps there so it looks proper and this is doing this all with ai which is pretty cool and there you go it looks like i actually took a straight photo it did all right not bad and keep in mind that you can save it as a copy so you're not overwriting the original which is always helpful a neat feature that's available on the samsung galaxy s24 ultra is the ability to remove glare and remaster your images so this is really helpful if you happen to be in front of glass when you take a picture so like this one i just click on the info button here so now what will happen is it has some options or suggestions here available like erase reflections so we'll tap on that it's going to analyze things and you can see here that it has removed some of the reflections that make the image a lot easier to see. You also have the option to remaster it. So here we have this image that I took from the plane and it looks a bit washed out. When I click on remastering, you have this as an option. So it looks a little bit more contrasty and nice. Have you ever taken a photo and you realize that your shadow or someone else's shadow is in the way? Well, you can actually remove them on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, kind of neat. So here I have this image where some shadows are ruining the image. You click on the eye icon here. So now you have the options that pop up like erase shadows and I'll use some AI stuff to remove them. How crazy, what the heck? How well do you think it did? Now the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra has a lot of really awesome features that help fix your photos, but can be a bit tedious to go through each and every single one to find out what to fix. Well, there is this convenient thing in the gallery app that allows you to see all the suggestions easily. Click on the hamburger menu in the bottom right and click on suggestion. And now you'll see remaster pictures for a bunch of different images suggested here. So improve color, brighten and reduce blur. So it pretty much scans through all of your images to find suggestions for you. So that way you don't have to do all of it on your own manually. Hey, did you know that you can add a portrait blur to an image after the fact for a selfie shot or a shot of people? Let me show you how. So here's a photo that I took with the main camera lens, kind of pointed at myself like this. And maybe I wanted this to have a portrait more mode, like kind of blur. So we can add background blur and then it'll analyze everything and add it for me. And you can choose how intense it is or not intense. So that's pretty crazy that you can do that after the fact. So that looks pretty dang good to me. What do you think? Here is a really crazy feature on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra that makes a photo that you took become a, like a 24 hour time lapse. It's, it's, it's great. Let me show you. So go into the gallery app, bring up an image for something outside or whatever else. Click on the eye icon 
and then it'll pop up and say 24 hour time lapse. It'll use AI now to generate a 24 hour time lapse going from the time that you took it to nighttime and you know morning and things like that. You can see how it's changing right here. Oh my gosh, how crazy is that? And you can even add uh, some sound to it or adjust how fast it goes. You can also save it as a copy so you don't destroy the original image. I mean, this, this is kind of dope. <laughs> This is kind of cool, what do you think? One of the coolest features on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra is the ability to create an instant slow motion video. Let me explain what that means. So I brought up a video that I filmed recently in the gallery app and it goes by pretty dang fast. It's only eight seconds long and things move by pretty dang quickly. So I don't really get a good look of it. Now, if I move over to the beginning and tap and hold on it, you can see it starts moving everything at slow motion. It uses AI now to add additional frames to make it look slow motion. So now that I have hit the edit button while holding down for the instant slow motion, and you can click on adjust speed. You can choose it to do one fourth the speed and you can choose where this starts. Um, so maybe it's uh, right here. This is all the slow motion parts that I want to have here. So it's at one fourth speed, you can hit play. You can see how right when he goes into the area, it goes into slow motion, a little bit of a speed ramp right here. Now this is really awesome that you can add in slow motion after the fact and in a specific area, if you have pets or kids. A lot of times we're filming video and we're not always expecting to need slow motion. And this adds an option to add it after the fact in a very high quality way that is pretty convincing, especially for social media. Now there are a lot of AI features on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, but did you know that most of it is not processed on the device, but you can choose to make it process on the device. Let me show you how. Go to your settings by clicking on the gear icon and go on to advanced features. Click on advanced intelligence. And then you have the option to process data only on device. Now keep in mind, this is great for privacy, but the results of the AI processing will not be as good as being able to send it off to an offline server and then coming back to your device. So keep that in mind. I personally would rather keep it off, but I understand if people wanna keep everything on device. Also, some services do require that you have the option to process it off of the device. So, you know, if it's searching for something specifically, then that makes sense. It needs to search the internet. Did you know that you can cut someone out of an image like on the iPhone, but on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra? This can be really great if you wanna make some stickers or create thumbnails. So I brought up an image here on my gallery app and I'm just gonna tap and hold and boom. Now I can save it as a sticker or copy and share it. You can see that you can create an outline or cutout. This could be really great for Discord emotes or Twitch stuff or even in cartoon, my goodness. So we'll click done and now we have a sticker. We can also tap on it and click copy, bring up your messaging and we can paste it. And now I just pasted a little image of myself right there. Pretty awesome. So that could be really cool if you copy the sticker and you wanna go over here and you can choose to paste from the clipboard. And then now I have another me in this image. <laughs> Did you know that you can use the volume keys to do a lot of different things in the camera app on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra? Let me show you. So go ahead and open up the camera app, hit the gear icon for your settings, and then go all the way down to shooting methods. And then you'll see the option for press volume buttons too. So right now it's defaulting to take a picture or start recording or ending the recording of a video. You can also zoom in and out or control the sound volume. So now I have this here and I can use the volume key to zoom in on my teleprompter or whatever else or I could just zoom in on myself and hold it up kind of like a tell, like a little camcorder, like a dad, like a, like a dad. Did you know that you can take pictures on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra by using your palm? Let me show you how. Open up the camera app, hit the settings button, go down to shooting methods, and you'll see show palm. So now I just hold up my palm, it notices it, and it takes a picture. And it also works on the video mode. Have you ever had this happen when something's happening really quick and you go to bring up your phone to take a video, but you're in photo mode? Well, if you just tap, hold, and drag up, now you're in the video mode, just like that, and then you can stop. So that's a quick and easy way to go to video mode in a split second in case you are in the wrong setting. There's a really neat feature that acts a little bit like you have your own camera person when you're filming video. Let me show you. Open up your camera, go to the video settings, and click on this icon right here. It's the auto framing on feature. So now when you have it like this, and you move around. I don't know if you could see, it's zooming in and framing things around for me pretty dang easily. Whoa, it's pretty, that's pretty neat, right? 
Here's a neat feature on the Samsung Galaxy that allows you to group together similar images so it's a little bit easier and less overwhelming to swipe through your gallery. So go to your gallery, click the dot, dot, dot right here and click on group similar images. And you can see how there are little icons right there for multiple images. And if you don't wanna group it anymore, you can ungroup it, click the dot, dot, dot and ungroup similar images. Did you know that there's a really cool astrophotography mode on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra? Let me show you. You have to download the expert raw app from the Samsung Galaxy store. And then there's this little icon up top here that looks like this, like the stars. And you can have a sky guide. So you can click on show and based upon your location, it'll show you what the stars are and constellations are around you. Pretty dang cool, isn't it? And this will allow you to put this on a tripod and get an astrophotography, like long exposure photo. So maybe you wanna capture this kind of a uh, constellation here. It'll capture an image for seven minutes. You have a bunch of different options here for seven and 10 minutes to get the shot that you want for astrophotography. And you have a little guide there, pretty cool. Even if you just wanna see what stars are around you. With the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, there's some really awesome features in the gallery app to create albums and albums that you can share with others. So all you have to do is click on the albums little tab here in the gallery app. You can see a bunch of different things here. So click on the plus icon here. So you can create a generic album, an auto updating album based upon pictures of people that you select. So familiar faces of sorts. Then you can even group related albums if you want to. You can share an album that you've created or create a shared family album. So if a a whole bunch of other people have Samsung Galaxy devices, you can invite them into this album and everyone can contribute photos to you know that album. So maybe it's stuff from uh, a holiday or a birthday and you all wanna just take pictures and just throw it in there and not have to deal with kind of sharing it another way through like Google Photos or Google Drive or whatever else. You can do it through the family shared album, which is really awesome. Here's a really cool feature that I just used recently when I was at an event and it's called dual mode camera. Go over to your camera app, click on more and click on dual recording. So now I'm recording on the main camera and the selfie camera. You can control the resolution and the frame rate. You can even adjust whether or not you have this little picture picture set up like this, or if you have it like top and down like this. Along with the picture in picture options, you have this little icon here at the bottom. So you can choose the different camera angles that you have available. So maybe you don't wanna have your selfie camera on here. You just wanna record the ultra wide and the wide at the same time. So you can record both of those and you can see both of those options here. And if you want to, you can record the images or the video as burned in like it looks here, or you can record separate video files, which means that you can utilize these in different ways how you want. That's really great for post-production because maybe you're not sure which video you want to utilize and now you have options. Now, if you've ever wanted to have more control over the audio settings in your videos on your Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, you now can. So go to your camera app, click on more, click on pro video. So when you're in the pro video mode on the camera app, click on mic and now you can see the various options that are available. You have Omni, which records everything around it. You have front, which is in front and rear, which is in the rear. If you have a USB microphone clipped into it, like the DJI mic, you can use that as your microphone. If you have earbuds, you can put these in your ears and you can use this as your microphone instead. Hey, did you know that you can create your own custom filters or LUTs for your images? It's super easy and really cool. All you have to do is find your own image that looks the way that you want it to look. I'm gonna grab an image from my friend Evan Schneider at LUT Company or LUT Co. I love the way that he color grades things. It's beautiful. Now I've downloaded the image that has a look that I like. Now I'm going to go to my gallery, click on an image that I want to adjust, click on editor. And then what I'm going to do is click on the filter circle. So we're gonna click on this. Now you'll notice that there's a plus symbol over here. We're gonna click on that and then we're gonna create our own filter. We're gonna choose the image that we downloaded and we can see how it's made it look similar to the image that uh, we, we added here. So we just create it. And now we have our own filter to add 
whenever we want. Now here's a cool thing. Now we can go to other images because we've created our own filter and we can use it on those. So let's click on this one over here and we'll click on edit. And again, we'll click on the filters and we'll go over to the far right one. Pretty cool, right? One thing that is kind of a bummer about Samsung Galaxy devices like the S24 Ultra is that some apps are duplicates of Google apps and I don't want to have two. There is a way to hide these apps and let me show you how. Go ahead and tap and hold on the home screen. Click on settings at the bottom and then click on hide apps on home and app screen. Now you can find what things that you don't want to have on here anymore and hide them from your app drawer and your main home screen. So maybe I don't want to see tips and now we're, we have that done. And you'll see when we swipe up over here under T, you don't see uh, tips anymore. So you can hide whatever apps you want. Beyond a typical find my device or find my phone, you can turn on the ability to find your phone even if it's off. It's important to create a Samsung account and then turn this setting on. So we'll swipe down from the notification shade, hit the gear icon, go to search and type in find my, and then you see this option for offline finding. So you can turn it on and then you can locate your phone even if it's offline and help others find their devices. Now what this does is it correlates the location based upon other Samsung devices. Even if some thief takes your phone and turns it off. It's kind of like their smart trackers, which I have a review of, which you can watch up here. Hey, if you ever end up in a rough situation and you need to get help from doctors or some medical attention, it's important to have your medical information readily available on your device. Here's how you can make it easily accessible to someone who finds you in a dire situation. Swipe down, click on the gear icon, hit the search button, type in medical, tap on medical info. Here you can enter in the information about yourself, like your name, medical conditions, blood type, allergies, medications, so on and so forth, whether or not you're an organ donor, you know, address, so on and so forth. In dire situations, whatever extra information you can provide is really important. Hey, if you ever end up in a dire situation where you need to contact some designated people quickly and easily, or maybe you're not conscious or able to contact them and there's a police officer or a doctor or whatever else that needs to contact them, there's an easy way to set up emergency contacts. Swipe down from the notification shade, hit the gear icon, hit the search button, type in emergency emergency, tap emergency contacts. Now, when you click on this, it'll allow you to add certain people here. I've added my own account here and you can add additional people there and you can also show them on the lock screen. So whenever something happens, it's easy to contact them. So if it's over here, you can click on emergency call and you can see that there's a emergency contact right there. Say you're in a really rough situation that is uh, pretty scary and you are trying to get some help, but also doctor document something that's going on. There is a mode on here called emergency sharing. Now the way that this works is you would have to turn it on, go to the gear icon, click on search, type in emergency, and then click on emergency sharing. Over here, you can enable this. Now what happens is it'll contact someone, it'll send an SMS there, it'll share your location, it'll send notifications, it'll even take pictures so it can send it to your emergency contact. So let's hit continue and give it permissions. We have our emergency contact set up. Let's attach pictures, attach an audio recording, and then start emergency sharing. So, okay, so we'll start emergency sharing over here. It's gonna capture images. So it has emergency sharing, we're gonna have our, it'll share where you're located. It'll send uh, information about my battery life. It'll even uh, send an audio clip of what's going on right now. And it'll also attach a picture from both the rear image or rear camera and the front facing camera. So it has a whole bunch of different things for a very dire situation. And then once you're done, click on emergency sharing and click stop sharing. Hopefully you never have to use this, but just in case, this is how you do it. Now, if you are in a dire situation and you need to make an SOS call, you can enable it with emergency SOS. Go to the gear icon to your settings, type in SOS and you'll see emergency SOS right here. Open that up and then what you can do is have it so that you hit your power button or your side button five times in an emergency to call for help. And you can set up so you, it requires a swipe to call so you don't have accidental uh, activations there. And they can choose the emergency number to call. So we'll choose the 911 option there. You can also choose mountain police, things like that. There's a bunch of different options there or a custom number. And then you can also make it so it sends an SOS to your emergency contacts. So just look at the prior tip if you wanna know how the send to SOS to emergency contacts works. So now that that's activated, you just click five times on the power button or just keep clicking on it. And you'll see this option. You just have to swipe and then it'll call 911. We'll hit cancel. 
so we don't do that. Hey, uh, if you ever end up in a situation where you don't want someone getting into your phone, even utilizing biometric unlock, like your face, your finger uh, print, or anything else, maybe like a mob boss gets you, or an X, you can go to your settings, swipe down, get the gear icon, go to search, type in lockdown, so tap on show lockdown option. It'll ask for your pin number, you'll type in your pin number, and you'll see down here there's this option for show lockdown option. We'll activate it. Now when you go to the power button up here, you'll see an option that is called lockdown mode. Now this means that no matter what, you can't get into it. You can't use biometric or anything. You have to enter in your pin number or your password that you set up in order to get into your phone. Hey, did you know that the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra has an earthquake alert system built into it? Let me show you. If you go down and swipe down to your notifications and hit the gear icon and just type in earthquake alerts, tap on that one. And if you tap on it, you can enable earthquake alerts. So it'll give you a little bit of a heads up before an earthquake actually arrives. This is really helpful if you're in California, Oregon, or Washington. Uh, may not be available everywhere else, but pretty cool if you're in those areas. I used to live in California and it actually has worked for me before, which is crazy. Hey, did you know that there's a document scanner in the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra? Go ahead and open up the camera app. Just hold it up over your document right here and you'll see that it highlights it. And then you can just tap the little text button there off to the side in the corner. It's gonna scan it and you can add a note to it or scan the text or copy all, or you can just download the whole image. So there's a lot of different features there for documents that are really helpful. Hey, if you have sensitive apps, documents, photos, videos, or whatever else on your phone, there is a really convenient feature on the S24 Ultra that allows you to create a secure folder that uh, makes it easier to kind of hide all that stuff. Go ahead and swipe down from the notification shade and hit the gear icon. Go to search and type in secure, and then you'll see an option for secure folder. Let's tap on that one. And now you have the option to create a secure folder. Let's hit continue. And here are all the different things you can add to it. And it's going to create a secure folder. Okay, now it'll ask you to set a pattern, pin, or password. I'll create my own and turn on a reset with Samsung account. So if you have your Samsung account, you can you know reset it if you need to. We'll click next. So say you go to your gallery and you want to hide something like this document right here. You can choose move to secure folder. And now this image has been moved over there. So now that I've done that, we'll just find the option for the secure folder and go into the gallery and you'll see that it's in there. Now, the other things you can do when you have the secure folders, you can go into it. You can change the customization of it. So it's name, so it's not secure folder, you know, the color of it and the icon. You can also encrypt it if you need to, add additional files, sort it, and then lock and exit. So now, when you go into it, it'll ask for your pin number in order to access it. Now, while the display is way more durable on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, it is not scratch proof. I even have a little scratch on mine already, which is kind of a bummer. And that probably means you want to have a tempered glass screen protector like the one I have linked down below in the description. The downside of a tempered glass screen protector or a screen protector is that it can impact the sensitivity of your fingerprint scanner. So here's how to make that better. Swipe down, go ahead and hit the gear icon and go to your security and privacy and click on your biometrics. Now click on fingerprints and then it'll ask for your pin number or password to access it. Now, what you want to do is make sure that you re-register your fingerprints after the screen protector has been installed on your phone. So kind of erase all these and then scan it all over again. Once you've done that, it'll understand that this is what your fingerprint looks like with the screen protector on it. And that's how you improve the fingerprint scanner when you have a screen protector. Hey, did you know that you can make your own animated GIFs using the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra's gallery feature? Let me show you. So let's uh, go into the gallery app on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra and say we choose, you know, these options right here. Now that we've selected those, we'll tap on create. Now we can click on GIF or collage or movie. So we can click create a GIF right here and it'll look like this. Or you can create an option like this. So we selected those, we'll create a collage. And you have the option of changing the layouts, aspect ratios, things like that. So you have one to one, we can go to three by four, nine by 16. This option is really great if you wanna share something to Instagram. Now these final tips talk about the S Pen. So it only applies to the S24 Ultra, but there's a bonus tip that works for all Android phones at the end. So you should stay until the end. 
One of my favorite features of the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra with that S Pen is the ability to make GIFs super easily. Let me show you. So now that I've taken the S Pen out of my phone, you have this option here that's called Smart Select. So we'll tap on that one and we'll just choose GIF as the option and it automatically detected that this area right here is what uh, I would want to capture. But now you have the option to just record the video right here. You have standard quality and high quality. So we'll keep it a high, high quality and then hit record. And so now it's recording right here. It'll go up to 15 seconds. I'll show you what the file size is as well. And then you can stop early if you want to do so. So this is really great if you happen to want to post something on social media. This is great for content creators. If you want to post an anime GIF for your community tab on YouTube or something on Twitter or threads or wherever you want to do. Really neat, you can pin it, you can copy it, you can download it, you can readjust the aspect ratio, whatever you want to do. Hey, did you know that there's a little Harry Potter setting for the camera on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra? Let me show you. When you open up the camera app, you can tap and hold on the button and you can swipe up and it'll change to the other camera mode. If you swipe up again or swipe down, it'll go to your selfie camera. You can also swipe right, you can change to the portrait mode or keep swiping over to go to the different settings. And then if you want to, you can just hit the button and take a picture. Now make sure that this setting is turned on if you want to use the Harry Potter wand for your camera. Go all the way down to advanced features, go to S Pen, and then make sure that air actions is turned on. Ooh, look at the time and the percentage on the phone. I gotta charge this. All right, we've charged up the battery a bit more. Look at uh, what time it is now. One of the best features of the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra is that S Pen, but it would really suck if you lost it. Well, here's a way to make sure that you never lose your S Pen. Swipe down for the notification shade, hit the gear icon, Swipe all the way down until you get to advanced features and then find S Pen, click on that one. Go down to the bottom, click on more S Pen settings. And then you have this option here for warn if S Pen is left behind. So a show warning if you leave your S Pen behind and walk away with your phone while the screen is off. Oh, so it'll say, look, got your S Pen? It's not inside your phone. Make sure it's somewhere safe. So now that's how you know how to never lose your S Pen. Now, if you want to make sure that you never have any sort of latency or connection issues with your S Pen, there is a feature or setting on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra that makes sure that you're always connected to it. So go to your settings, swipe down all the way to advanced features, find S Pen, go down to the bottom, click on more S Pen settings, and then choose keep S Pen connected. This will use more of the battery on it, but ensures that it never loses a connection with your phone. If you have this turned off every single time you take the S Pen out, it will have to reconnect to it. So there may be some delay there. Hey, did you know that you can unlock your phone with your S Pen? Here's how. Go to your settings, swipe down, click on the gear icon, go to advanced features, go to S Pen, go down to the bottom, click on more S Pen settings here, and then have yourself check the S Pen unlock. It'll ask for your pin number. It's not the one that I'm putting in. I don't know your pin number. So now it's locked, double click on the button, and there it is, it's unlocked. How convenient is that? But just keep in mind that uh, there might be some security issues with that. So if you just want the convenience, this is awesome, but uh, it's not very secure. Have you ever received something like a contract or you're trying to look at a menu on your phone and everything looks super tiny? Well, if you have the S Pen on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, there's this option here called Magnify that allows you to just hover over an area and you can see it a little bit easier. You can even zoom in a little bit more. So you have 300% if you want to do that and you can read it a little bit easier. Pretty awesome if you just want to skim around and things like that and you just happen to already have the S Pen in your hand and pinching the zoom seems a little awkward because you have to set down your S Pen and or like do this thing and it's just a little easier sometimes when you're already using the S Pen to have Magnify. Now it's great that you can use the S Pen to write notes and everything else, but sometimes uh, the notes look like a chicken scratch and you need to just kind of convert it into text. Here's a way to do that. So you write something in your notes. So please subscribe. And then all you have to do is tap and hold on it right here and you can change it to convert to text. So tap on that one and convert and now it's just text and you don't have to look at like some sort of doctor chicken scratch. You never know when you need to take a quick note and being able to just take the S Pen out of your phone and get to writing a memo real quick, hit the bell icon. Wow, that's awful. Uh, <laughs> it's really convenient. Let me show you how to turn this on. And when you go to your settings here, hit the gear icon to do that, go down to advanced features, go to S Pen and you'll have this option to enable screen off memos. That means that once you take the S Pen out of your phone, even when it's unlocked, 
unlocked, you can start taking notes immediately. Did you know that the Samsung S24 Ultra is really helpful if you would need to translate something or learn how to speak another language? Let me show you. It happens to work with air commands. So you take out your S Pen and you want to add in the option for translate. So I already have it added right here. So what we'll do is click on translate and we'll choose the language that we want it to translate into. So we have English to Armenian. I'm going to bring up some text here. So all you have to do is hover over something and it'll translate it. So you can see how it's written in that language and even have the option to listen to things. It's kind of interesting, but it is a, a little bit more tedious because it's word by word. Now here's a really quick way to take a screenshot and annotate it using the S Pen on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. All you have to do is take a screenshot. There's a variety of ways. I have it set up so I can do a palm swipe here. Go ahead and click this little icon here. And now you can immediately take a note here. So you can see that right here. It is now midnight while I am recording this after I don't know how many hours. And now you can save it. And there you go. Now the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra does have a built-in screen recorder, but I actually do not use it. And here is why. I use AZ Screen Recorder. And this is a really awesome screen recorder that provides a lot of options that are more powerful than the built-in screen recorder. It gives you so much control over a variety of different settings and it's how I'm able to make high quality videos like this. So you have the option to record at 2K with a high video quality and I can choose a frame rate that's 25 frames per second. So I record at close to 24 frames per second, just like slightly under. And that means that the screen recording doesn't drift a ton while I'm recording this talking head, which can create some severe syncing issues while I'm editing the video. If it was at 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second, like the native recording app, I would be constantly retiming this screen recording like no other. So this app, AZ Screen Recorder, is amazing if you're a content creator. Uh, just remember to enable show touches in the developer options, unlike what I did for this whole entire video. So shucks. <laughs> Do you have any other tips that you think would be helpful? Go ahead and leave some comments down below to help support everyone in the community and help me learn of more things that uh, I can add to the next tips and tricks video. And don't forget to join the This Is Tech Today community discord chat server. I really appreciate if you share this video with others to help them out. And if you subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. Thanks for watching This Is Tech Today. Until next time.